With that, Pat, are you ready to talk about uh, about Harbor Town? Yeah. Let's talk about Harbor Town. Let's talk through some key stats. Let's talk through some strategy, some approach to the week from a betting and gambling standpoint. We've already kind of hit on recency bias. I think that's a big thing. Uh, and then we'll get into some picks. But uh, why don't you hit us with the course breakdown, Pat? Actually, what's the podcast use right now? What you got? Uh, well, I switched from the beer. I'm back to the Tito's. So okay, yeah. the Tito's mixer. Tito's for me. We did this video with, with Scratch a couple hours ago, and I, we had to drink wine during it. And I got I got wine tipsy. I don't usually drink yeah. wine, so I got like wine tipsy at like three o'clock. I had to I had to slow down. Yeah, well, but I'm yeah. back now. That's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so this week we are at Harbor Town Golf Links. Just a great old classic course, just under 7,100 yards. It's a par 71. We got an expanded field this week, actually. It's at 100, well, it's, it's 155 players, but they're at 153 right now. They've had a couple back out, but they're not filling those slots. Long story short. Anyway, Bermuda grass, tee to green. You got very narrow fairways out here, tight, you know, tree lined holes. You might recognize a little bit of a theme here, kind of like last week at Colonial. This is a very similar course, at least off the tee. Um, so, again, it's, it's one of those courses where you typically can't just overpower it. Uh, you got to be somewhat accurate off the tee. You can miss it a little bit, but the trees literally, I mean, they are right off the fairway. So if you miss by a little bit, you could be in some tree troubles out here. But it's all about the angles, and it's a second-shot golf course, just like we had last week with Colonial. I like strokes gain approach. I think that's a huge stat this week. Um, I do think experience is, is pretty key out here. I, I don't think you're going to see a first time winner on this course, even though we got a lot of guys that might be playing this for the first time. But I think got it a lot does of take first a time winners, though, you know? Yeah. But well, it's presented a do. lot of first time winners. Yeah. But I just don't, I know. I think this thing, this course takes some experience, especially into these greens and knowing where to hit it off the tee. And that kind of stuff, because again, you, oh, you can't mean overpower. you mean experience at you mean experience at Harbor Town. Yeah. Okay, you said first take time some And actually, this field. Did you hear this? This is a crazy stat to me. That of the 150 something here, 114 players have won on the PGA Tour in this field. Have you heard that? Did you hear that? How stat? many? 114 players in this field have logged a a victory on the PGA Tour. Okay. That's a lot. That's insane. Yeah. So, I mean, odds are a first-time winner is not going to win here. This but time. anyway, well, yeah, but anyway. So, again, this is a – it's a it's a course. It's, like I said, a second-shot course. I don't think scrambling plays as much into this course as you saw last week at Colonial. If you look – if you watch the Colonial, I mean, there were some deep drop-offs and slopes off of these greens – you know, there, but not here. It's, you don't really see that a whole lot. So I'm not as, as looking at scrambling as much, even though they're pretty small greens, I'm looking more at greens and regulations, strokes gained approach, that kind of stuff. Um, I do think you made that great point last week about course history being not as much of a factor at colonial because of the way the field was and how strong it, it is. I think you can look at that again this week. Um, but I will, I'll look at uh, some course history, um, but overall, for me, stats, I do think I'm putting a little bit of emphasis on driving accuracy, ball striking. I mentioned the approach. Um, we'll see. I mean, these players, it's, it's just like last week. It's just so hard to tell when you got, you know, six of what, the top ten players in the world playing here that don't normally play on this course. Um, so we'll see what happens. But I'm excited for this this course to, to, to get these – studs out there because we usually don't see it you got guys like you know because it, it's always right after the masters this if, if you don't remember this tournament is literally the week after the masters so a lot of people skip it and the weather's going to be a little bit different coming here in june as opposed to april where it's a little bit cooler so it's going to be warmer the ball might be traveling a little bit further so some they've already said there's no here. uh there's no overseed anymore right now so it's pure yep. bermuda yep and Right now, the weather looks pretty good, though, so I don't think that's going to be a huge factor. It's going to be in, like, the high 80s with not not much wind right now, but we'll see what that looks like. But uh, as far as past champions, you had C.T. Pan last year. Um, Kadira? I can't even remember what his first name was. Soshi? Satoshi. 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 2018, you had Wesley Bryan in 2017, Brandon Grace in 2016, and Jim Furyk in 2015. 
So there you go. That's uh, your quick course breakdown. What do you got, DB? Any any thoughts on uh, how this course and how you see it playing this week? Yeah, I'm glad you asked, Patrick. Um, I I do have some thoughts. First of all, I'll, I'll go. I'll work backwards. Just like last week, I agree with you. I think experience here or, or course history, if you will, let's use it for a couple of reasons. Let's use it to nail down the types of players that traditionally have done well here, which we can. And you can definitely see a common theme, although, as you mentioned, you, you don't have the strength of field here that you that, uh, in years past that you do now. So you got to take that into consideration. But – I'm not, I'm not going to wait it as much this, this week. However, just like last week, it's a, it's a decent tiebreaker. Okay. Like that's, that's what I think we were trying to communicate last week is I, I think it's a decent tiebreaker. If you've got a couple guys in a range that you're trying to work off of and, and they, they, you feel like they fit the bill, but one guy, you know, hadn't played here before. And one guy's got two or three, tur- you know, tournaments under his belt. Maybe two of them are missed cuts, you know, and maybe one of them's a top 25, like, I, I would I would lean the guy that at least has has shown up here and you know likes it enough to try to put it on his schedule um, and uh, and, and you know just just give it a little extra nudge if it's a tiebreaker is what I'm saying. Um, so in terms of course history, that's kind of where I'm at. I think we probably agree there. Uh, I do think the main defense here, as you mentioned, is your is if it gets firm, which I think it will be. Uh, and if the wind kicks up, which we all know it's on the coast, it could change like that. So even though the weather right now doesn't look bad, you got to check it Wednesday. That's again, why the nut hut's important. The chalk bomb's important. So we can have that last, those last minute thoughts on weather come Wednesday night. Um, and, and I think it's the gnarly Bermuda, you know, especially this, uh, this week, if, if a lot of the overseeds died off and you've got nothing but Bermuda chipping on that grainy Bermuda that they have there. I played Harbor town last year. Um, and I'm not a professional. I did play from the tips, though, because Kisner bet me that I, I couldn't break 85, I think, from the tips, which I didn't. I think I shot like an 87 yeah. and 88. Um, but uh, the, the gnarly Bermuda is real. So I actually have to disagree with you, Pat. I, you know, you said that you didn't think chipping and scrambling and around the green play mattered. I actually think it matters a ton. And I, I weighted it pretty heavily in my model because – these are very small peat dye greens, um, you know, and I, you, they're going to be missed. And so I just think like bunker play, scrambling, being able to get up and down, um, similar to last week at Colonial is is important. Now, I, you know, I feel like the greens at Harbor Town. I just Town think are that maybe- the shots that you have to hit off the green at Colonial require a lot more skill than around the greens here from walking this course before i haven't played it like you have i've walked it before um i just i don't see like like yeah you can get like some gnarly lies and things like that because of the bermuda but i just don't see as difficult of uh, of a shot as far as you know what you got to do from around these greens because there's not as much slope which can cause i mean that that can cause all kinds of problems when you got a lot when you're you know chipping up you know, a 10 foot slope or something. Yeah. So I just, I mean, it's there's just not as much you know, slope. You're, you're right. You're right. There's not, but you, but, but these greens are, I think these greens are probably smaller than, than the greens at colonial. So you're going to still miss them. You still got to be able to take a wedge and get it up there close. And, and again, yeah, I think you got to be able Bermuda, to get it up and down. I, I agree. You got to be able to get it up and down if you miss a green, but I don't think it takes, you know, if you're looking at a stat like scrambling, that's a guy that's, you know, that's literally on all types of courses, he's a great scrambler. I think somebody who's not so great at scrambling can still get around this course if he's missing because he's not going to have the difficulty, you know, that you might see on like a, a like colonial where it's much more difficult around the greens to scramble and it does take more expertise. So that's, that's really my thought. But I mean, it's, look, it's, we're kind of splitting can, hairs a little bit here. Can we agree I, I that the point. most important thing here is your approach play, your iron play? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. definitely. Um, and definitely, you know, Harbor Town is one of those. So we didn't talk about this. Like, what do we think is going to happen with the distance thing, right? Because we saw, you know, we saw Colonial get bludgeoned to death by Bryson and and gang. Um, I feel like based on when I played Harbor Town, I feel like based on – watching Harbor Town through the years because I love that golf course. I feel like 
it's harder to cut some corners out there because I remember a lot of land being, um, you know, native area almost, or, or, you know, pine straw or woods or, or very thick, like just thick brush or whatever. Like it, it looked like a colonial. There was just, you know, it was like, if you missed the, if you missed the fairway, you were in the rough and yeah, you might've had some tree trouble, but you can get to your ball or you were like on a, on the other side of a fence and you were OB. Whereas at, at Harbor town, if you miss the fairway, there's a little bit of rough and then you're in the, you're in the, the trees, but the trees could mean like, like brush, like, or you can't even get a, you can't even get to your bar, yeah. find it. I, I feel like we're, I think Bryson, Bryson and the like are still going to be, are, are going to be trying to go after this thing in a new way that we've not seen before. And we've even seen, you know, Davis Love the third who has won this thing like five times, I think. And in his day was the long, you know, one of the longer guys on tour. So length is still an advantage, but I'm just talking like, are we going to see somebody like Bryson attack this course in a way that we've never seen it attacked before? Um, it, you know, cutting corners. I don't, I don't know. I don't see it this week. There's not a whole, I don't think it's, it's a different course as far as that's concerned. Like what Bryson was doing with, with taking, taking on some of these dog legs and just not even, you know, forgetting that it was a dog leg and going over the trees. I don't think you, you just can't do that out here. Um, and there's a lot more houses on this course. Like, I mean, Sea Pines itself, where Harbor Town is, is, yeah. a, is a, you know, a residential community. So it, that makes a little yeah. bit of a difference too on what you have and what's out of bounds and things like that. So there's a, there's, there's a lot of, of trouble there. So we'll, I don't know. We'll see. It, it does feel like, like, like you could do it at Harbor town, but it feels like you, you're at a greater risk at Harbor town of having a ball be OB or completely yes. unplayable. Um, yeah. Not just like in the rough over by a cart path where you got to hit it under a tree to scoot it out into the fairway. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't feel like that. Yeah. I mean, Jason day a, a couple of years ago was quoted as saying, that for him, he feels like there's there's four to five drivers that he hits on on this course um, when he plays it. Again, Jason Day's not – I mean, he's a long hitter. I mean, we, we all know Jason Day can yeah. hit it long, and a couple of years ago he was he was longer. Uh, not what Bryson did yesterday or, or last week, but he's still pretty long. So I do think it's going to – we're not going to see – I think I read too where, I mean, the average distance off the tee of this, this course is like in the – you know, like 280, 290 range. So people are dialing it back. I mean, from, you know, from an average standpoint, you know, they're not hitting it 340 like Bryson is. Now we may see somebody try to do that. They could completely and utterly fail if they do. But I mean, I think the play is, and like I mentioned in the course breakdown, is you want to have those good and proper angles into these greens to be able to approach them in the right way. And that means dialing it back and not having, you know, you know, I mean, you know, not, not being able to really bomb and gouge this course. I just don't think that's going to happen. Being on the proper side of the fairway matters at, at uh, Harbor town much more than even colonial. I mean, again, I'm not trying to say like I'm some PJ tour pro, but I remember last year, there's one hole in particular. I can't remember which one it is, but I remember my caddy telling me it's the one that Pete Dye let his wife design the green and it's got the uh it's got the uh i don't know what you call it like the wood around the green you know like the wood wall kind of that that surrounds the entire green but that hole is a short par four i hit my two iron left center of the fairway in the fairway he like hit it good in the fairway completely blocked out from being able to get to the green completely couldn't get to the green unless i like hit a flop shot onto this ridiculously tough green like you have to be on the right side of that yeah. hole, right? You can't just be in the fairway. Another you have reason to be... experience comes into play here. On it, this it's very interesting. Harbor Town's a, an interesting beast. It, I'm, I'm excited to watch it. I'm excited to watch it go down. Pat, uh, you know what we didn't mention? For all those watching on YouTube live right now, we didn't mention the fact that a someone who at least has heard of the Tour Junkies finished second and third in the Millie Maker on DraftKings this past week. Mr. Toe knows oh, that rocking we need to hear from this, this, this guy. Yeah. I mean, rocking, please rocking the avatar toe nose, rocking the tour junkies avatar uh, in the Millie maker finishes second and third for $225,000. Holy moly. And in fact, he was one point away from being tied for the Millie. He, he almost, he almost took the whole thing down, but love to see the tour junkies avatar up there for that. That's fantastic. If you are toe nose, please reach out to us. We would love to hear from you. 
Um, we we want to get you some free stuff uh, for rocking the avatar and finishing top five in a GPP like that. Of course, you should really be giving us some free stuff because you just want two hundred twenty five thousand dollars. But you know, it's neither here nor there. You know what I mean? Neither here nor there. Now, I didn't mention my key stats before we get into the picks. My key stats. I'm looking at. I did tell you I was I was weighing scrambling strokes gain around the green pretty heavily. Uh, I'm also looking at strokes gain approach, and I'm looking at putting on Bermuda. Again, I, this is grainy, no overseed, South Carolina, Bermuda, baby. That That is like – that is that is going to be a welcome site to many players. It's going to be an unwelcome site to others. And you got to know how to read it. It's grainy. It's, you you got to know – you or your caddy has to understand what that grain is doing to the golf ball. Um, so I do think that matters, and I'm going to look at that over the long term, um, as I always do with putting stats. 